Good morning. We are so glad to see you today. What a blessing. Thank you, Robert. I forgot my little microphone, but I appreciate you doing that. We welcome you. What a good day this is. And I trust that you're just relaxing and enjoying God's goodness. We've got one and now a couple announcements to make. First of all, a giant thank you to the Bendinsky family, honchoed by Brenda, as they take care of our flowers and plants. It has been sad to report to you that sunstroke has taken its toll on some of our plants. So uh, Brenda has replaced them and uh, we're set to go. So thank you for that. Also, I would like to say that we are praying for Leon Hinton and for his family because they will be bringing home Linda on the 29th, which is next Wednesday. And we're excited about that for Leon and, and for the rest of the family. Thank the Lord for Terry and Wayne that's going to help her get to the house. And that's a good thing as well. Uh, we do have a number of prayer requests, so look at your prayer sheet. There's some on the lectern, our spiritual needs, uh, critical health needs. Pray as well for uh, those in care homes, which would be Linda. Pray for Neil Clack, too. His daughter's been diagnosed with stage four uh, liver cancer. And so pray for, pray for Neil. And then remember the other, the other requests as well, humanly impossible prayer requests. I'm thankful that we can pull together in the ministry as we find it. Thank you very much. Joel, would you come? Um, I don't have an update to read from mom and dad, but I, we did talk to them on Friday, and there's a few things I can bring you up to date on and ask for prayer about. Um, they're in the middle of their like, um, winter ministries, and it's chilly down there. It doesn't rain in Uruguay, or it doesn't snow in Uruguay, but uh, it, it gets cold, and the houses aren't typically very well insulated. So you've got your nice, awesome, you know, iron, uh, cast iron wood stove, and, uh, and that's, you know, they got their coffee cup setting on the wood stove so they enjoy it we enjoyed it as kids but it does get cold at night so they've also been struggling with some coughs and some colds that they're recovering from so pray for their health uh, when we talked to them on friday you could still hear it that they, they were pretty uh, sick and struggling with it um, but then pray for dad um, he over the last several months has been noticing his his eyesight was weird and he thought his prescription was kind of off but he had just got him when he was here in the states so he went to the doctor and they said nope you've got a cataract so and uh, he said well is it you know can it be operated and he's like yep it's right there ready to ready to go so he'll be going through cataract surgery um real soon i forget which day they said but in the, in the next uh, week or so um Pray for, for that to go well and for his recovery. And praise the Lord for their, the, the way medicine works down there is, is kind of interesting, but the, you basically join a, like a club and you pay a monthly club membership and that's your medical care. Um, and a lot of it ends up being free after you've paid your, your membership dues. It's, it's, it's a different system. In some ways it works great, in some ways it's not. But in this case, it's, it's a, it'll be a blessing to them, and, and it's covered under their, their medical provider. So praising, praising the Lord for that. Remember to pray for each other throughout the week. Pray for each other's health needs and, uh, and those who, uh, who are, aren't here with us today. Praise the Lord for those who come, come back to us so I don't have to uh, struggle on my own up here on the stage <laughs> with the guitar and things falling over. And oh my word, it, you, you should have been here. Uh, no, literally. Uh, so, but anyway, we're praising the Lord, y'all are back. Let me lead us all in prayer. Father, we are so very grateful to be here today, and we are grateful that we can open your word, be in the word, Lord, to hear the truth spoken. Lord, thank you for the freedom to do that, Lord. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be open and ready and willing and convicted, and Lord, whatever it is, it is needed, whatever work is, is to be done in our hearts today, that you would do so. Lord, that we would bring the uh, praise, the honor, the glory to you uh, in, in, in this church as we, as we gather together as a family of believers. Father, we do pray for uh, Tim and Carrie, for my, my parents, that you would provide for their health needs, Lord, as they recover from 
uh, colds and coughs and we pray Lord that you'd help dad as he goes through surgery really soon and that he'd recover quickly and be able to, to uh, return to his ministries uh, Lord thank you for the the health coverage that they have that that allows them to to do this surgery and that it not be uh, an expense on them or, or an extreme expense on them Lord I pray for those who who aren't here today and those struggling with health needs especially that you'd be with them and care for them Lord and that they're they're those who are caring for them would have the strength, uh, Lord, to, to do what is needed. Lord, we do pray for Leon and the Hinton family as they bring Linda home. Lord, I pray that that would be uh, a joyous uh, uh, homecoming for her, that, uh, Lord, that they would have the help needed and, and the space needed, Lord. And we pray that you would uh, just provide for all the, uh, all the needs there, Lord. Lord, we pray for Bill and Gloria and, and for their strength and encouragement as well. Lord, we thank you. Uh, uh, for the Zimmers that were able to be here. And Lord, what a, a great time that was. And I hear that it was such an encouragement to many. And uh, Lord, we do pray for their travels, that you would um, provide for them and, and, and their safety as they uh, visit their, their different churches and their home. Lord, we, we pray that this time would be, again, a, a time of praise and honor to you, Lord, and, and that the, the message that is preached would be powerful in, in, on our minds and powerful in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters in Christ at Grace Baptist Church in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. They want to say greetings to all of yins because in Pittsburgh, instead of y'all, they say yins, Y-I-N-Z, in case you're wondering how it's spelled. So greetings to all yins from the Pittsburghers up in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. I also bring you greetings, um, and directly their pastor greets you, Dad. Um, his name is Vic Koshier. He likes to refer to himself as the vicar of velocity because he is a, an avid motorcyclist. Um, in, in his previous life, he worked on them, and he was actually taking a, going to take his motorcycle out for a ride, and he had a spill as he was getting ready to just walk. He was walking the bike down his driveway, and he shattered his collarbone. Had to preach for two weeks with that shattered collarbone and a, and a cracked rib, uh, and just had surgery this past Tuesday. So I'm sure that Pastor Vic and his wife Jeannie would appreciate your prayers for him as he recuperates because he's also an avid fisherman, and I know we have some avid fisher people in here, and he's not going to get to do any of that for a long time. So if you remember Vic Koshier, please pray for him and for your brothers and sisters in Christ at Grace Baptist at Greensburg. It is great to be back here with our church family. We missed you. We thank you for your prayers on our behalf, but it is great to be back together. And, and it is good to get away. It is good to, to have some time away. We visited with family. We're able to take some time by ourselves as well. But it's also a blessing to be able to worship the Lord together. And I did enjoy singing with, with my dad's church family up in Pennsylvania. But I am really looking forward to this morning as we lift our voices in praise of our God. Our God is worthy of our praise this morning. Amen. We need to recognize God's sovereignty. The rest of the world may not, but we as those who have trusted Christ, we who were once at enmity with God, we were his enemies. The wrath of God rested on us, but no longer. Why? Because God made a way for us to be reconciled to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we trusted Christ as our Savior, we're no longer enemies of God, but we are his children. We are his friends. We are friends with God. Christ. That's amazing, and that should prompt us, that alone should prompt us to praise our God and to give him all of the glory. So would you stand please this morning and let us sing together, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. 
Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice, great are you, Lord, great are you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross and i'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, 
all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. As I mentioned, it is good to remember that we are no longer enemies of God. It is good to remember the story that God tells in his word of how he has redeemed, or he has made a way for mankind to be redeemed, to be reconciled, rather, to him. And our God is worthy of our, of our praise simply because he is almighty God. And the Lord Jesus Christ is our king, and therefore he is worthy of our praise. But again, it is such a blessing to know God intimately in the way that we can because he made a way for us to come back to him. And I pray that you, as this song says, that you can sing from the depths of your soul how wonderful it is to sing the blessings of the Lord. Oh, sing my soul the ancient song and lend your highest praise to him who is the king of old and dwells in endless days. How resplendent his glory, how majestic his name. Now to the uncreated one, Oh, let the anthem raise. Oh, worship him, our Father God, the Spirit and the Word, who fashioned all things from his joy and saw that it was good. What perfection of friendship, what communion we shared. But choosing death, we fell from life aside the guilty pair. Now hear my soul, the gospel song, attend the joyful news. For Christ has come, the perfect Son, His Father's will to choose. In our place He did suffer, in our place became sin. The death of death, the death of Christ, who stands alive again. Now, people of the risen Lord, oh, hear the call to go. Into the world we have been sent as messengers of hope. Christ alone be our treasure, Christ alone our reward. Come bid the nations sing with us the praises of the Lord. Christ alone be our treasure, Christ alone our reward. Come bid the nations sing with us the praises of the Lord. Thank you for singing with us this morning.
Dave, I want to tell you that Joel did a great job last week. We appreciate him. We're going to be talking this morning about the subject, Meet the Real Jesus Christ. I've asked a couple of pastors in our area that have uh, kid groups, and they said you would be shocked at how many kids in this area have never heard the name Jesus. And they don't know what it's all about. And I think one of the most powerful tools that Satan has at his disposal is religion. Did you hear me? His most powerful tool is religion. And anything that Satan can do to confuse or accuse or contradict or draw people away from Jesus Christ and build into them apathy and show them false religions, that is what Satan will do. In the mid-1800s, Pastor C.H. Spurgeon said this, and I quote, A time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Now that's pretty direct. And that was said in the middle 1800s. I'll say it again, a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Wow, what a statement that is. Satan is alive and well in religion today. Some of Satan's tools include Mormonism. They will claim to be Christian. And if you talk to them, that is what they will tell you. And when surveys are taken about who are Christians, they are numbered among the 57% of people in America who say they are Christians. But wait a minute. Most of them have not been saved and are not in the Bible deliberately. Mormonism. Mormons teach that Jesus is the literal son, small son, of the Father. He earned his way to godhood, small g, in pre-existence before he came to earth. Therefore, he is not equal to the Father. Having achieved exaltation himself, Mormons believe Jesus is the Savior, but limit his atonement to providing physical resurrection for the people. According to Mormonism, Jesus' sacrifice merely opens the gate to the path that leads to eternal life with God, leaving humanity to earn their exaltation. And they claim to be Christians. Satan is using religion in our day. The Watchtower Society, better known as Jehovah Witnesses, teach that Jesus Christ was the first created being of Jehovah God. Jehovah God created Jesus as a divine-like spirit at some point in ancient pre-creation time. This means, and I'm quoting, that he was created before all the other spirit gods of God, and that he is the only one who was directly created by God. 
That quote came from their book, You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth. They say his pre exists in his pre existence, Jesus was known as the Word because he was God's spokesman, according to the Watchtower Society. Jesus is also identified by Jehovah Witnesses with Michael the Archangel. Reasonably, then, the Archangel Michael is Jesus Christ, according to Jehovah Witnesses. So the evidence indicates that the Son of God, that's Jesus, was known as Michael before he came to earth. Satan is actively using religion to confuse and accuse and create chaos among people in America today. From a Muslim perspective, Jesus is held in high regard within the Muslim worldview. According to a legend, when Muhammad eliminated all the images of other gods in the Kaaba, he refused to destroy the statue of Mary and the infant Jesus. Jesus remains in a high position of respect and reverence within Islam. When Muslims speak the name of Jesus today, they typically either say Hazrat Isa, Reverend Jesus, or Isa Alai His Salam, which is referred to Jesus, peace be upon him. While Muslims believe Jesus was to be revered as a prophet and an apostle of God, they do not believe he was any more than this. And the Muslim religion is growing exponentially right here in Atlanta. The Baha'i faith describes Jesus as a manifestation, in quotes, of God and acknowledges Jesus was sent by God and their God was Baha'i. And the Baha'i faith does, however, place Jesus alongside other messengers from major religious movements. Jesus being equal with Abraham, Muhammad, the Buddha, Christia, Krishna, and Zoroaster. Many today. Now today, good old Oprah and others of her ilk view God, and she's got a whole website on this, as, and I quote, the mystic God, small g, the mystic God of cause and effect. What would you say that is? Karma. And whenever you hear karma used by almost everybody on TV at one point or another, that's speaking about the mystic God of cause and effect. I want to meet the real Jesus. And remind you so that you are ready then to talk to others as the opportunity arises. Patty and I uh, met a server in a certain restaurant a couple of weeks ago. And we had an opportunity to just share a wee word from the Lord with her. And she received it well. And so now the other day we chose to go back to the same restaurant early so that we could get into this same server's uh, area and we saw her and greeted her and she remembered us and it was just she's just such a friendly person and we began to talk to her about a lot of different things including our marriage and she said well what's your secret <laughs> and we had a chance to really share what Jesus Christ means and what can be found in the Word of God don't worry, that's not crying, that's music.
Thank you very much. So with all that's been said about Satan, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to meet the real Jesus and see who Jesus was from the book of John. God, challenge our hearts, though we probably have heard this before, so that we might be re-stirred and re-excited to talk to others about Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll give you three points this morning. Most pastors do. The first one is, Jesus always was. Jesus always was. And the opening section of John's Gospel, we will be turning together to John chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 3 in a moment. So I'll give you a moment to turn in your Bible. The opening section of John's Gospel expresses the most profound truth in the universe in the clearest of terms. Now, though this is easily understood by a child, John's spirit-inspired words convey a truth beyond the ability of the greatest minds in human history to fathom. The eternal, infinite God became man in the person of Jesus Christ. The glorious, inconvertible truth that in Jesus the divine word became flesh is a theme throughout all of John's gospel. And I quote that from the writings of a commentator. Meet the real Jesus. First of all, we see in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. The word arche is the Greek word for beginning. In the beginning was the word. He did not just come into existence. He was not created before creation time. He was not given life by God. Jesus did not come into existence when he was conceived in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus had existed before creation itself. And the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, brought creation into existence by the power of the Word. In Genesis 1 and 2, which we won't go back to, God spoke 12 times, bringing into existence the heavens, the earth, and all that is in them. Look at Psalm 33, would you? And be, be quick to take notes in your Bible as we talk together. Psalm 33. I'm looking at verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Twelve times God spoke. All things were made through Jesus Christ. Would you look at verse 3 of 1 John? All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. All things from the farthest galaxy, which is yet to be discovered, to the minute little gnat, that drives you nuts at a picnic. All was created by the Lord. And John is emphasizing in our passage that Jesus is eternal God and the only Savior of sinners was Jesus Christ. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. In verse 1, the word was is an imperfect tense word which draws our attention to a continuing action in the past. The word was God. And it was always, he was always God. He never was created to be God. He was God, very God, and not a created being in any way. He existed from all eternity. Jesus Christ is God. And the writer of this gospel, John, says in chapter 20, verse 31, and this looks at the theme of the whole book, John 20, 31. It says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. There's no wiggle room there. Jiggle, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. Jesus is God. Secondly, Jesus always was with the Father. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was always with the Father. He was with God. Proston theon is the Greek word. It literally means face to face. It has the idea of intimacy. To be face to face with someone is to be intimate with them. Now I know if you're like me, I need my space. And when people get too close to my face, I want to get back. It makes me a little jumpy. And I don't like it when people get that way, especially if they're a salesman or a preacher. I like my space. But in this case, God the Father and God the Son, they were face to face in their intimacy throughout all creation. Would you look at John 1.18? John writes there and says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him, Jesus Christ. And this expresses Christ's shared nature with the Father. Every believer is in the Father and in the Son, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, at the moment, you trusted Christ as Savior. And during our men's Sunday school class, we went around the table, and, and they said when they got saved, and we were talking about that. And at the moment you trust Christ as Savior, you are indwelt by the Spirit of God, one of the three persons of the Trinity. What a blessing it is to stop and remember that, regardless of what you're experiencing, what you are facing, what you find in your life at this time. You see, Jesus was in fellowship with the Father at all times, including when he walked on this earth. And together it was the Father and Son that did the work of the ministry through the power of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus said, everything I tell you, I've heard it from my Father. He did his Father's will. Look at John 5, verse 30. Sometimes we who have been in the church a long, long time, uh, people like Joe and like Ella, they might lose the excitement of Jesus. And they might forget what Jesus is all about and who he is. And you leave here and you go back to what we would call real life and you begin the grind. And then you can't look, you can't, you're excited about the weekend. <clears throat> and 
and you don't know whether to come back next Sunday or not because of how life is unfolding. And we forget to be amazed at the person of Jesus Christ. John 5.30, Jesus himself said, I of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. How much more wonderful our Christian life would be if we would live in the truth and behave in the truth and respond in the truth to say to the Lord, I'm not seeking my own will, but the will of the Father. I'm setting aside my will, my demands, to do the will of the Father. How different life would be for believers today. And Jesus is speaking in this passage, the, the words given by the Father. Look at John 15, 5. And here's where it gets sweet. Here's where our hearts should be further tenderized. Here's why is when we should just stand back in amazement. John 15, 15 says, and it's Jesus again speaking, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. And you might think, well, that was good for the apostles. But now it's 2,000 years later. But everything Jesus wanted you and me to know, we find in the Word of God. Amen. In the pages of Scripture. It is important to read your Bible. It's important to know what's going on inside those covers. Because it is Jesus who is speaking to us through the Word of God. Because we're His friends. Isn't it sweet to have good friends? I don't have many. And that's okay. You don't have to have many. But to have a good friend, somebody you trust, somebody who's honest with you, somebody who will hold you accountable. What a blessing. In this passage, Jesus sought only to know his Father and the Father, his Son. And the only time that the Father turned his back or forsook Jesus was on the cross. And this is what makes our salvation so amazing. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's the Apostle Paul who's writing after Jesus Christ died on the cro cross and ascended to heaven. Paul says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It was Jesus hanging on the cross when the Father poured out on Jesus all of the punishment for the sin of all mankind. Every sin you've ever committed was put on Jesus Christ. And that's why we see in Matthew 27, if you'll turn there, Matthew 27, we see Jesus on the ninth hour. Jewish time, about three in the afternoon. And in Matthew 27, 46, we read, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Translation is given, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
And it was at that time when the father forsook the son because the son was made sin for you and I. And he suffered and he paid for that sin. It's called the atonement when he died on the cross. Let's meet the real Jesus. Point three. Jesus always is God and always will be. And the reality is that Jesus is God and it was introduced in the prologue of John's section. And this truth that Jesus is God is expounded throughout all of the Gospel of John. And he carefully selected claims. He carefully selected miracles. He carefully put into that gospel that which needed to be put there so that you and I could realize the seal of God's case is complete. Look at John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him nothing was made that was made. In these three verses we see the most succinct statement of the deity of Jesus Christ. Being co-equal with the Father in his ministry. What a blessing. But look at verse 4. We jump ahead. John 1, 4. In him, that's Jesus, was life. And the life was the light of men. The light of Jesus Christ is what points sinful, ungodly, condemned men to salvation. It's not coming to church, guys. It's not being a Baptist, folks. It's looking to the light, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5 says, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend that. Most people think Bible, Bible believers are nuts. Not true, some of it act nutty. But they think we're crazy for believing what we see in the Word of God. They're in darkness. They don't want to hear truth. They don't want to turn to light. They don't want to give up the world. The light shines in the darkness. I was in the darkness. You were in the darkness. And the light shined and brought us to salvation. What wonderful verses we find in the Gospel of John. And these verses relate to the salvation that Jesus brought, which was announced by Jesus' herald, John the Baptizer. And John the Baptizer was Jesus' cousin, if you'll remember, born late in his parents' life, as opposed to Jesus, who was born very, very early to his parents' life. But in John 1, 6 through 8, the Bible says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Not John, the writer of the gospel, but John, the one that baptized for repentance. Not the biblical baptism that we experience today, but for repentance. And this man, verse 7, tells us that this man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, John the baptizer, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. And the light that he brought to our world today through the word of God is what brings salvation to all. Now the true church of believers since the time of Christ accepted the fact that Jesus Christ 
is the only begotten of the Father. That term only begotten literally means unique. It usually liber, literally means one of a kind. Now, I know a lot of you guys refer to your wife, wow, she's one of a kind. I don't know what you mean by that. But it's not in the sense of what we've got here. Jesus is unique. There is nothing like him in his person and work. I say today, hallelujah, what a Savior. Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, God. For Jesus. He is our Savior. He is our teacher. He is our friend. And I rejoice in Him. Help us, Lord, not to fall into the wiles of the devil and become apathetic about Jesus Christ and about salvation and about the church. He died for us. And now he lives. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand as we close our service in a song that reminds us that the Lord Jesus is Lord of all. All my tomorrows all my past Jesus is Lord of all I've quit my struggles contentment at last Jesus is Lord of all King of kings Lord of lords Jesus is Lord of all all my possessions and all my life Jesus is Lord of all all of my longings all my dreams Jesus is Lord of all. All of my failures, His power redeems. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all, all my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all, all my possessions, all my possessions and all my life. Jesus is Lord of all. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that we have been able to hear your word preached, the truth of your word. Thankful that we can gather together in this place. And I pray that you've been honored and glorified by the way that we have listened, by the way that we have received your word. And Lord, by the way that we have praised your name, I pray, God, that this might not be the only day this week where we do that. Help us to be people of your word. May we read your word daily. May we study it for ourselves. Help us to look into it so that it may reflect back, as your word tells us it will do, to help us to know what to change and how to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of knowing you and the Lord Jesus. Thankful for the Holy Spirit that gives us understanding. And may we take opportunities this week to share the gospel with those around us. Please bless us as we go from this place. 
For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.